I started writing songs before I could play an instrument. I'd just get sort of phrases. I'd hear phrases and they'd trigger off like little rhymes in my head and stuff. I don't know if that was the influence of Rupert books, little rhyming bits and used to have, not the big bits. But I started to, the first one I think I ever wrote was about, I heard my mum say that there was two pubs on Cannon Circus Island and I had this thing about, you know, monkeys in the brand, the elephants in the shandy that I drove them on mad with, you know, properly mad. You know, so. And I started playing instruments because that's what people you know, in the 60s did. Uh, a lot of teddy boys around with guitars that we bought and we could borrow them off of. And uh, the second song I ever wrote, I got on television with, so that was uh, like a big encouragement because I was not too good at fighting and I wasn't very, very clever at school, so being good at something, it made me stick with it. And uh, I've written songs ever since. And it's shaped my entire life and you know, the type of people I've uh, ended up meeting and the type of things I've done. And I uh, haven't had any great commercial success. I had a bit of, you know, single of the week in the enemy, the band called Gaffer that John was in, joint single of the week with Eddie and the Hot Rods to be perfectly accurate. <laughs> Places and his peaks. And uh, yeah, and uh, so what do you call that? Affirmation or something. So it's something I've kept doing, even when I. There's not been many times when I haven't been in a band that doing my songs for some work. And uh, also play as a musician in a band called Massy Mass, which where I mainly play, just play the double bass. Because having this compunction to write songs and maybe gather some skills on instruments, that I, I don't think I would have gone that way if I hadn't to write these songs. So uh, I'm going to play a couple of songs. I'm going to play an old one that I wrote when I was about 24. And when I was thinking about what to do, but this song uh, came to me. And in it, even though I was, I mean, 24 was pretty young, but I was already looking backwards, which uh, that was uh, interesting for me. Like it's old, you know, you think when you were young, you know, you're just going to go down and going to live forever, but that, that one, how my song like that was set up. So this song's called uh, Feeble Without a Pause. This is John Maslin, the guitar, Richard Kensington on the Cajon. And uh, this is a, this is this is a piece of art by yeah. design. Oh, like My base, yeah. iconic item. I love it. Yeah, this song's called Feeble Without a Pause. Hey, let's drag out the old dance set.
absolutely right, yeah. When I was singing that song, I was thinking it also was uh, referencing earlier songs I wrote now, and right for the like, playing all the two of my songs. So I obviously had an idea of myself as a writer. Anybody want to say anything? I like it when you're to talk. <laughs> Anybody? Do you feel, do you feel, uh, feel self-conscious as a writer then and you still now? I feel self sitting here with everybody, you know, sitting here. I'm used to just playing away in a you know, club or something and, you know. Don't like it. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know, like when you elevate something to a song, it's mm. like makes it kind of precious, doesn't it? Like, I don't know. And to tell you the truth, once I've done it, I just sort of I've done it. I really, you know, it's, it's for me, it's one of the best feelings in the world when you actually sort of. Get, what I like most about it is it makes something out of nothing. You know, and then it, you know, I suppose the songs then it's nothing really, because it? it just goes into space. It's not like a painting or something. I mean, I know it's a recording of it or something, but lots of my songs I can't remember. So I went through a phase that I didn't write anything down. I could just, people say, oh, do that one, and it's just two lines left, do you know? <coughs> it's all on the hard drive, but search engine something. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're doing by writing lyrics first and fit these around it all? I, I, not always. You know, I, I haven't really got any set rules. Sometimes maybe John will play something or the other people that I've played with them, and that will give you an idea. But a, a lot, of, I'd say for myself, a lot of the time it's been lyric driven. I think that, that my entry into writing songs was lyrics. Really. I mean, I like, I like sounds and stuff, but I didn't like them. Uh, any more than any other person my age at the time. You know, I mean, I wasn't somebody who was, you know, I did a bit of Irish music, so my background and that, and the, a bit of what joined the boys were getting silver band to get, but that was to get some uh, music t uh, t lessons, really. Yeah. Just basic ones. But forget very quickly. But, you know, but I just was, you know, I know it was important to get some uh, skills. So I knew what other musicians were talking about. <laughs> yeah. And do you guys want to say anything? Mm -hmm. Is it an intentional way? Is Are it? your lyrics intentional? Int yeah, definitely. Okay. Not accidental. No, they're not accidental, they're intentional. <laughs> because there's only certain certain things just stay in my head and they I have to sort of do something with them when it bothers me. <laughs> I, I was going to ask something about uh, that motivation, Mina, and you. It always seems that you're motivated to um, say something about what you see, rather, yeah, than, rather than like some like songwriters that think, "Oh, I'm going to write a song." Mm. You, write? you know, it seems this, the motivation comes very much from yeah. your experience. Yeah, people, you know, often. Thanks, Rich. Yeah. People often say to me, why don't you, why don't you write a hit single? And uh, no, I love to. <laughs> <laughs> people, people say to me, oh, you've got so much integrity, you've never sold out. I say, listen, nobody ever asked me to put the wrong one out. Nobody ever asked me to do it. I don't know what I would have said, but you know, it's, that's the strange thing as well about sort of being a songwriter. People assume that you, you know, you've got. Uh, it turned down a lot of success or something, you know, just you know, because some people who write songs have a lot of success, but don't they? You know, like commercial success. You can't know. do any despite that, I'm not asking you. Because that's not what I did it for, I did it just because it was a very, very strong compulsion. Yeah. Anybody else? We'll do another one then. This is a uh, this is a much newer one, and uh, I've come to a time in my life where I've kind of moved, well, not kind of, I definitely have, I've moved back in with my mum, in, into the house that I was born in, which is, you know, it's not to look after, it's just to keep her company, really. And, uh, 
what I found there is there's still odd people who were there when I was a kid, you know, just a few sort of strong for that war generation there. And uh, obviously the rest of the estate's changed a lot. And uh, yeah, so it's just about that really. It's, uh, to say you should write about what you know, so that's what this is where I'm at at the moment. I mean, I don't mix much with artists. I've got a friend called Ted Springer who 
draws to but he's hard to talk to. And I ask him to be able to have something to say in another discipline. So how, how important has it been working with other people? Uh, vital. Yeah, for me, vital, yeah. I don't think I would have, I think I'd have withered away and died in isolation. It's been everything for me. So I'm, uh, obviously I'm not a child, but I'm an only one. And uh, I think one of the things that appealed to me about music is that family aspect to it. I always thought I ended up you know, being around Asian mates' houses or Irish mates and had big families. I definitely went towards that. I think music, for everybody that's involved in that, I think that's, is it? Yeah. Or just you, <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Have you um, sort of always felt part of something through your music making, or does that, if you have, does that feeling kind of come and go with like, you know, like, like in our, uh, if you live somewhere, like I used to live in Edinburgh, and there'd be like a lot, sort of load of activity in, in a few years, and then everything would come and die down again. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of tidal. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's the same. Uh, sometimes the energy sort of, you get a twister of energy and then it, I think very naturally sort of goes away and people you know, spin out from it and, and maybe come back. You know, I mean, John and I, I mean, we've played together for you know, 40 years, sort of on and off, but there was a big break while he went off and did his, what he had to do. <laughs> I keep thinking that looks like a space age tag or something, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, just like for art, I think it was a very lively place for music. There's always been plenty going on, you can always find new music, you can always find new art. And that's, yeah. yeah. That's, I think it's, it, 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 if you want to live here, if you live here, you want to be in one of those things, you can always find something, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Well, you might have to turn back a bit, <laughs> you found places to do. I do, yes. <laughs> well, one, just one thing that, from a musician's point of view, I also write as well, but I, uh, in a sense, work better probably with me. There's always a strong idea of collage, you know, in Wayne's writing, which you start, if you look at it on paper, you know, it's a sequence of images, it's like images of poetry, you know, it's like a sequence of images which make sense as a totality. So collage, you know, the sequence is, this is the, this is the estate. The estate is made up of glances, of visual things you see, of responses. And it's just exactly the same. It's quite corny in a sense. <laughs> you know, you're looking around, there's a gate, there's a person fighting a policeman, you know. It's like a collage and that's the essence of the painting. You know, you know it could be like Jackson Pollock would be going through a kind of intellectual journey. This is a sort of visual column. That's how the way I see it now. It's really interesting because Gillian and her presentation earlier was talking about bricolage and sort of just finding things and, and remaking yeah. the works of working from what's around you. Yeah. I suppose that's why I, phrases start off for me. It's often mishearing things. I, I like that a lot. Yeah. And you do that a lot in your artwork as well. Because yeah, Wayne, I do. Wayne, Wayne does a lot of collage as well for yeah. sort of in birthday cards mainly, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So, but they're all... That's my niche, man. We don't know the graphic. Can I switch? Um, how's the estate is? It aims the estate of Western Woodwall near Weeksdale Do you know it? Um, is it... Um, You're not a taxi one driver. Be, no. <laughs> <laughs> is it one of the 1930s? Or 1949. Yeah. My mum and dad moved in here. Moving when they yeah, yeah, it's brand new, yeah. They got bombed out in St. Anne's, my mum's mom, house, and we got camp from somewhere else, but yeah, yeah they got bombed out and lived uh, with the parents and people a bit, and then they got that house, yeah. They were really pleased, you know, really pleased. I think everybody was. And like I say, the, the, on, on my mum's street, there's, uh, there's a man left, which is quite one man, and uh, I think two other women. So my mum's 90 now, so who have been there all their life, you know. 
I'd, I'd say that's a really important thing about your work as well, is how much of your experience specifically of Nottingham, and yeah. living in, and working as a musician based in Nottingham, how much that comes through. Mm. And uh, I know that when I, I was talking to John Holmes once, and he said that was from BBC Radio Nottingham, and uh, he was saying that one of the things he's always loved about Wayne's songs is that he sings about things that he really knows and that he's really experienced and there's no um, sort of pretension or kind of adopting right I'm going to sing about the, the blues delta even though I live in you know the Angel estate or wherever you know it's very much a lean delta a lean delta <laughs> <laughs> songs like allotment and stuff like yeah, that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, down at my allotment I did think about doing some Nottingham songs but I just fancy the change because I, I always sound kind of get locked into that Uh, 
It's not something I've done, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not something I've ruled out. Mm -hmm. I've, I've helped other people yeah. like, write their songs, so. <laughs> uh, but I've never done anything like that. But yeah, I'd rather go anything, really. Yeah. Okay? I can not to say about bikes, games, or raves. Bikes, games, or raves. You've been to the raves and caves, haven't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a different, different talk, isn't it? <laughs> we just watched the video. That's survival. Tired <laughs> of vinegar. You can survive the raving past if you drink some cider vinegar and hot water and honey. <laughs> clean yourself, get yourself clean again. You don't mean that sort of rave. I've got a rave on. Orange juice. Orange juice. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.